the London 2012 Olympics was 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Does it feel like 11 years ago to you that we had the Olympics here in Stratford? The Stratford Olympics, really, not the London Olympics. I know things went on other places. And I started filming at this point today because this is where I entered the Olympic Park. It came from the Leighton end. I got a really strong memory of walking down here over the, uh, the, the Link Road Bridge into the Olympic Park. And it was a little bit like it was, it is now this evening, really quiet. I think it was the basketball. I came for the, for the men's basketball that evening or that afternoon. I can't remember what time of the day. I think it was the evening. And it was such a calm experience entering there off of Rockholt Road, no queues, sailed through the security, walked down here. And then at the end of the night, I left at about midnight and I walked back through the empty Olympic Park during the London Olympics, this massive thing. Just wandering around the Olympic Park at night. It was a really surreal experience and actually a really pleasant experience. So I guess this cycle track here that was built for the Olympics is actually probably more or less on the site of the old Eastway cycle track. I know I have uh, people who watch the videos here who cycled on that cycle track. It's wonderfully captured in Paul Kelly's wonderful film, What Have You Done Today, Mervyn Day, which was shot around the time of the announcement of the London Olympics in 2005. And he shot some scenes on the old Eastway cycle track. And here I think it's one of the most sort of successful pieces of architecture that was uh, developed for the London Olympics is the Velodrome, which is a glorious building and still stands up as a fantastic building as well. And it's actually become, I believe, like a real proper community asset. So I think it's time for one of my periodic surveys of the London Olympic Park because of course it's the site of much development since the Olympics which was part of the plan I mean we'll try and talk about a little bit about that as we go but I'm not going to get overly detailed and I think we, what I really want to do is to have a look at see what's here what's changed since I last did a survey I'll tell you in advance the thing I'm most interested to see is what they're calling the East Bank and it's a cultural quarter right on the banks of the Waterworks River, I think it is, that I've seen in skeletal form, but I haven't really done, I don't think it's in any videos. There might be a shot of it in a Q&A, but I haven't really included it because it was very nascent and developing. I think now it should be quite close to being finished. Um, so I really basically, that's the main thing in this video is to look at this brand new cultural quarter to, of London, but I also want to have a little bit more of a walk around the Olympi Olympic Park as we go. And actually, I picked up this before I went out at all, but as we go on, this massively relates to my new book, which is about to be published, by the way. I'm self-publishing it, so I've got to do a couple of tweaks. Then it's already, the first chapter was typeset, I spotted some errors, but the book starts here, in the Olympic Park. Well, actually starts over there in East Village, but that's by the by. But I've collected loads of these, and this is a map. It says, walk the Olympic Park, but it was clearly published sometime before the Olympics. Uh, there's an interesting feature I'll show you in a minute. Well, I'll show you now. I just need to unwrap the map. So here, here, well, we've just, look, there's the velodrome here on the map. There is the velodrome there, right? Velodrome, velodrome, and we're obviously on the park. But you can see here, here's Hackney Marshes and the A12 and the Homerton Road. I entered in just off Rockhart Road. I entered in about here. Now, can you spot something already, which is very different on this map to reality? The hockey centre, you can see, is sort of to the south of the velodrome, the other side of the A12, when in fact the hockey centre is basically where the velo park is. They're in the wrong place. Now, whether this is the original plan and then they changed it for some reason, or it's just a mistake, I'm not sure. But that is not the correct alignment. It's the other way around. It's literally flipped around the other way. So this map is obviously before they started building. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? And there's another giveaway as well here. Can you see? Press Centre is here, right next to Stratford International, where in reality, the Press Centre was over here, near Hackney Wick, near the multi-sports arenas over here. So this must be a speculative map. I, my guess is this map is from some, must be like 2005, maybe. I don't know, strange. 
I think we should climb this mound here to that silver ball so we can get a, a proper look at the scene. So you can't really see much of the athletes' village from here, the Olympic village. I made a video about that, I think it was 2020, so I will link to that below, 2021. So I'll, send a link, I'll put a link to that below where I do a thorough survey. Not much change there. This development here is called Chobham Farm. One of the new neighbourhoods they were building around the Olympic Park. I think there's five or six. Obviously they'll get that right in the book, I hope. And then over here, I don't know if this is in a video or not actually, to the left there is a new development. You see all those flats, let's go have a look at that. I think that, is, that might be Sweetwater. I should check the contemporary map. And next to it to the right is what was the broadcast center. And that's now called Here East. It's kind of like an innovation zone, if you like. I think that's been quite successful as well. One of the reasons the Olympic Park ends up playing such a prominent role in my book is I was invited to have a tour of the Olympic Village in that summer after the Olympics, 2013. That's the first chapter. I thought it'd be the only mention of the Olympic Park. And there's a bit more than that, but What's interesting is when I look back 10 years at the things they told me about the Athletes Village, the Olympic Village, East Village they call it now, is it's actually, that's, the plans for that have changed quite a bit. There's two massive tower blocks there, can you see? They're not part of East Village, I don't think, although they are basically in it and they kind of block the view that it was intended to have across the Lee Valley. I don't remember those from the 2013 plans, I think that's a more subsequent development. It kind of changes the nature of it quite significantly, doesn't it? And this is the Timber Lodge Cafe, which is a... I quite like this place, actually. I used to come here quite a lot once upon a time. I used to meet people here quite frequently if they want to meet me for a coffee. This is where we'd meet, and yeah, I like it. It's got a nice feel to it. Of course, next to it, there's a really wonderful kids' playground, which... Obviously, I'm not filming because people don't like you filming kids in the playground. Very understandably, not a thing to do. Take it on trust that it's there. It's lovely. And yeah, here you get a really good perspective on how the, uh, the blocks from the Athletes Village, the Olympic Village, are kind of dominated now by those two new blocks like looming above them, taking away some of their light, I would have thought. This is the, the Blossom Garden. There are 33 different types of uh, blossoming trees here. I suppose I've not really been through here many times actually, I suppose. It's on the banks of the River Lee. And the River Lee is just to the left and here's this beautiful growth here, the planting of the park was something that they were very proud of. They were very keen to emphasize. These are all native plants and wildflowers and grasses, and that they achieved that by using virgin soil from the uh, Eurostar tunnelings, or the high, it wouldn't have been the Eurostar tunnelings, but it would have been the, um, the high speed tunnelings. I guess it could have been the Eurostar tunnelings. But it was all virgin soil from deep below the earth, so there were no invasive species in it at that stage. This view never loses its power. The sacred River Lee. The generator of it all, really. I'm not going to talk too much about the book because I want to hold it so I can go buy the book. But um, there are a number of surprising things I discovered through going on the journeys that I went on for the book that I just kind of follow the sequence of events, really. And the role of the Lee in the development of London. It's kind of one of the sort of things that revealed itself. London Stadium, that is, um, is that London's third Olympic Stadium? I think it is, isn't it? White City, and then Wembley. I know Crystal Palace, maybe London, how many times has London had it? I should know that, I'm embarrassed to say. Certainly three Olympics, anyway. Now called London Stadium, home to West Ham United. 
West Ham fans, how do you feel about that being your home? Happy yet? And this here is called Agitos, and it's the symbol of the London Paralympic Games. We also came to the Paralympic Games for a day as well, and that was fantastic. Now, now some of you might be thinking at this stage, hang on a moment, John. We remember your 2015 Olympic Park video where you were very critical and quite almost acerbic about the Olympic Park. What's going on? Um, well, those original opinions haven't changed a great deal. But I think the thing is, this has become a place now. It's matured in a way. It has a life to it. People live here, people have relationships with it. I've developed a relationship with it over 10 years. It's been an interesting journey. So you have to recognise the good things, don't you? So you can really hone in on the things that are, well, that need to be questioned, let's just say. Like, who owns a lot of this? And of course, another thing that you encounter walking around the Olympic Park is it's basically been a, a building site since 2005, 2006. And it is going to continue to be a building site for quite some time yet. Look, there's more building here, but they do have this sign saying, what's happening here? Maybe I'll call that, maybe that's the title of the video. So here we've got some really good signage. This is, I, I love this stuff. Here East, that's the old broadcast centre. Klarnico Cub, love that. I don't know what the Klarnico Cub is, but Klarnico was the sweet factory. I'm sure some of you remember Klarnico sweet. And weren't they famous for their peppermint creams? The Hackney Bridge, linking the Olympic Park to Hackney Wick. Mossbourne Riverside Academy, that's quite new. Hackney Wick Station, the rest of it, we've passed. And they're, they're quite good at communicating what they're doing. It says by 2036, the Olympic Park will, ha will be home to 33,000 households spread between five new districts. East Water and Sweet, East Wick, sorry, and Sweet Water is two of those. Now to give them their credit, one thing that they have stayed true to in their vision is that all the little retail units, and you'll see some all around all these developments, they, they aren't chain stores, they're all independent retailers and independent businesses. Uh, you know, whereas you can imagine a vision where it's just the usual chain stores you see everywhere else, and that isn't the case because they're all in Westfield, of course, they don't need to be out here. <laughs> They've got Europe's largest urban shopping mall just there. So, before I forget, I want to do a shout out to Anna and Callum who I bumped into by the hockey centre back there, the viewers of the videos. Thank you so much, it was really lovely to meet you and say hello. Thank you very much, Anna and Callum. This is Eastwick. I feel like we should have a little look. I have had a look last year but let's go through there this is kingsford row eastwick these places here are kind of interesting aren't they they're a bit odd i think they're metallic or metal clad and there's a cafe down below it's uh, mossbourne riverside academy there's a big concert on somewhere over there that could mess with my <laughs> with my monetization, so I might have to voice over this bit, but that's Hackney Bridge, that's where there are some like um, bars and restaurants and things like that in there. Mum, every thought I have undone, but it's like I know, might just meet some guy and cry. another one of my sort of early I'd say objections I would say points that I raised that caused alarm in me is look at that skyline behind me actually look at the skylines all around it doesn't look like London does it now that's not necessarily a bad thing because this is now maybe what London looks like but it looks like other cities it feels like a template that has been copied that skyline belongs I sort of I think in the book I say it belongs in the sort of the back end of Houston Texas it's nothing particularly original or interesting about that skyline I don't think, you might love it. You might think, so what, who cares? That's where I've mellowed. I realise that some of my reactions are just deeply subjective. Some of them that you'll find in the book may be a little bit more objectively quantifiable and uh, scrutable, scrutable, that you can have a look at and discuss. 
I quite like this road. It's an interesting road, this. It's good for the sunset. I walked up here after I had done my um, Hackney Brook walk, right? which ends here, actually. I think this is the thumbnail, in fact, for the Hackney Brook walk. Or is it a different video? <laughs> Might be my Hackney Wick video. Looking west. And there is crowd noise coming from the London Stadium. Of course, it's used for concerts a lot during the uh, during the summer months. I wonder who's playing there tonight. So here's a view of the primary focus of this evening's stroll around the London Olympic Park, the Queen Elizabeth II Olympic Park, as it is properly known. This is one end of, well, it was called East Bank. I think now they're calling it Stratford Waterfront. If you look at A to Z from, I don't know how long you have to go back. I think it's about, certainly around 2002, you might get earlier. They do have this area marked out on the maps or greyed out as Stratford City. And of course the idea of the Stratford City development goes back at least to the 1990s. And then partially, you can even find the roots of it in the London plan, the London County Council plan for London of the, of the 1940s, of, during wartime, 1943. Obviously, they don't give it Stratford City a name. But, so this isn't really all just about the Olympics, this development. Some of it was in the wings anyway. I've, I've reached the age now where I haven't heard of the band playing at the London Stadium. So they're big enough to play a stadium. I've never heard of them. They're called The Weekend but they could be claiming the revenue from this video. Their music's all over this soundtrack. And I think the Victorian Albert Museum here, I think it's called V&A East. That is actually quite an impressive bit of architecture there. That's, I see, don't object to that. It's quite a distinctive original building, well, I, to my eyes anyway. That's sort of an addition to the London street scene, if you like. Not an imposition, not just an identical bit that's been slapped down any sort of any willy-nilly, but this is a, it's quite an impressive building. The rest of it is quite generic, of course. With Westfield, the London Stadium, and now this sort of cultural quarter here, it really is shifting the center of London's gravity east. That was always the intention, of course. And here we have the information, UCL East, which is, you can't see here, but it's further down, v &A East Storehouse. Oh, so it's just a storehouse collection. <laughs> And the BBC, Sadler's Wells, College of Fashion, oh yeah, and V&A East. So that concludes this latest instalment of my logging of the development around the Olympic Park, my continuous logging. What I'll do is I'll link below to various other videos around the surrounding area, also around the Olympic Park. I think they go back at least 10 years, 11 years. So yeah, I mean, a slightly brief one, but I, uh, for me, valuable addition to the logging of changing face of London. As I always like to say, thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. I actually know where it's going to be. Should I tell you or should I not? No, wait, wait. It's, going to be, it's a special one. It's another special one. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm.